Um, would anyone like to start with the Pledge of Allegiance? I will. Okay. Ready, begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dan. Will the recording secretary please call roll? Yes. Just a moment, please. Mm. Mm. Commissioner Sandoval Bailon. Here, present. Commissioner Germain. The link doesn't work. Commissioner Gunn. Meeting ID, or this on the join the meeting on your desktop. Present. Just a moment, please. Commissioner Macris. Here. Commissioner Orijo. Present. Commissioner Vasquez. Present. And Chair McLaughlin. Present. You have a quorum. Thank you. The recording secretary, will you now describe the way the public can access this virtual meeting? Okay, this meeting is being live streamed via the Santa Ana portal. If you would like to provide a public comment, you may do so in the following ways. Number one, join the meeting via Zoom. Enter meeting ID number 944-6274-0169. When the item that you would like to comment on is being discussed, select the hand icon. And actually, I have to say that when the media, you can you can do your public comment immediately upon uh, completion of this statement. That is incorrect. Um, so as soon as you can, you can get onto the meeting icon. Just click the meeting icon, the hand. Then, or you can call area code 669-900-6833. Enter meeting ID number 944-6274-0169. And when the item that you would like to comment on is being discussed, again, that's incorrect. Just, uh, we will allow you in, press the star nine to let us know you'd like to speak as soon as I finish talking. You will be called upon by the last three digits for your phone number. After you're called upon, you must press star six to unmute yourself and you will have three minutes to speak. And uh, we will alert you when your time is on, when your time is up. But, so if anybody would like to join in and uh, make a public comment, you may do so now. Lori, they have what, three minutes to speak? They have three minutes to speak. Is there somebody that um, is trying to speak, uh, make a public comment, Daisy, do you think? Is there somebody? If any, yeah, if any member of the public would like to speak, if you would please dial star nine from your telephone or select the raise hand feature from your Zoom application. Okay, you do have one member of the public, last three numbers, 762, who would like to provide their comment. Okay, so. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. So do I just click on that? I, I went ahead and unmuted. You you may proceed to speak. You have three minutes. Well, this is Carl Benninger. I've been unable to uh, connect you to Zoom because of problems that I'm here, having here at the Vote Center. So I am joining the meeting via uh, my phone. So I don't know if there's another number or if you can patch me in with the other members. Uh, or what you guys want me to do. 
Okay, yes, there is another number that you can call in on. And I will go ahead and give that to you, Carl. And that is area code 669-900-6833. And I'll give you the meeting ID number. Carl, you can okay. actually... You can actually stay on this line. I already um, renamed you and you can continue to participate in the manner that you're in right now. That's great. Okay, that, that, that's, that's fine. what we I get. That's what we get. And the clerk of the council is on the phone to help us out. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thanks. thanks, thanks, Daisy. My pleasure. Okay, Chair McLaughlin, you can proceed. Moving on to the public uh, comments on the agenda items or the non-agenda items. Um, so we have no one uh, interested in speaking, correct, uh, Secretary? It appears that there is not anybody that wants to speak at this time. So yes, you are correct. So let's move on to the consent calendar items one, two, and three. Do we have any commissioners absent that would like to be reflected in the consent calendar? There are no commissioners that are absent. This is a world record. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, we're, we're waiting a year, so we should. <laughs> yes, yes, very much so. Is there any motions? Um, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar one, two, and three? So and moved. So, um, my commissioners, would you please identify yourself when you make a motion or second a motion? Michael Macri, so moved. Carl do Manager, second. Excellent, sir. Who seconded the motion? Carl Manager. Oh. Thank you very much. And we will go ahead and conduct a vote on that consent calendar item. So I have a motion by Chair, by Commissioner Macri's, a second, Commissioner Benninger. Are there any abstentions? Okay. And so how many, can, can you each, um, indicate a yes vote. Did we raise our hands? Yes. So Lori, the best method to do this um, is to call each member and asking them for their vote. Yes, no, abstain. Okay, I was hoping I could do it in the minutes area. Is that possible, Daisy? Yes, I'm, I'm capturing it for you. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. So that will close each of the items, correct? And this is for all consent items. Okay. So, so go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start with Chair McLaughlin, right, Daisy? Correct. Okay, Chair McLaughlin, yes or no? Yes. Commissioner Sandoval? Bailon? Thank you. I wasn't allowed to unmute myself. Yes. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Benninger. Yes. Commissioner Germain. Oh. Yes. Commissioner Klein. Yes. Commissioner Macris. Yes. Commissioner Orgel? Yes. Commissioner Vasquez? Yes. The consent calendar has been approved. Thank you. Moving on to the business calendar. Um, staff will now provide us with information on item four which is the first street slope stabilization project. 
It should be noted that staff's recommending action to be voted on this selection of concept one, two, three, or four. And after staff does that, we go into a discussion of the items and we'll be entertained with questions. And uh, we can do that immediately after staff's presentation, our questions, and then we proceed with the vote conduct uh, conducted right after that as a procedure method. And I have a cheat sheet. Hey guys, all my old guys. <laughs> That's right. Um, Daisy, is it possible for me to make um, Nabil and the, and the conference room a presenter? Yes, I just allowed him to do that. Great, thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome, commissioners. My name is Nabil Saba. I am the director of Public Works Agency, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the first ETAC meeting in possibly a year or so. <laughs> and uh, just uh, gra glad to see all of you and I welcome the new ones. I'm hoping that, that we all meet uh, in person sometime in the near future. Uh, again, excited for this uh, event and I'm hoping that we will continue to meet uh, through ETAC for uh, the months to come and uh, looking forward for your participation and feedback and uh, just uh, great to see all of you. Um, today we have a presentation for you that will be, oh, I have with me here is our city engineer, William Galvez, also our NPDS manager, Craig Foster, and our principal engineer, our newest principal engineer in traffic, uh, Zed Kakula. And uh, we are here uh, to present to you a concept that uh, uh, on the uh, improvement of the first street underpass, Craig Foster will take us through that presentation. After he's done with the presentation, we would look for your discussion and vote on the best concept that you'd like us to um, go forward uh, with uh, to complete the design of the uh, first street underpass. And, like to welcome Craig, and now I want to share my presentation with you. Let's see. Come on. Do you all see it? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Now uh, I welcome Craig. All right. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome. Good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, rather. Uh, my name is Craig Foster. I manage the city's NPDES program. Uh, probably a more simple description of it is the Stormwater Compliance Program. Um, and I'm here to discuss the First Street Slope Stabilization Project. This is a project that we just began um, conceptual design of. And we are eager to uh, solicit some feedback from ETAC regarding the uh, concept design options that we have so far. So during the presentation, we'll go over the uh, project location, the project description, the project benefits, um, an estimated project timeline, some conceptual design options that we have. We have four of them. And then we will uh, solicit an ETAC vote on the preferred conceptual design. And then I'll answer any questions that uh, you may have. And this picture on the right here, this is First Street, uh, pretty close to Standard Avenue looking east. So the project location is right here, highlighted in blue. Uh, it's the First Street underpass where First Street goes underneath the train tracks in between Standard Avenue and Grand Avenue. There are four slopes along the, uh, in, through this corridor, we call, for, for reference purposes, we'll call it the Northwest, the Northeast, the Southwest, and the Southeast slopes. So the project description, so the, uh, the the, con the content of this project is to install decorative concrete along these four slopes on First Street between Standard Ave and Grand Avenue. And we're going to also, while doing that, improve the drainage at the top of the slopes and extend the fencing at the top of the slopes. Uh, we're also going to incorporate a stormwater treatment device to filter stormwater runoff in the project area. And then we're also going to incorporate a city logo or city icon uh, within the decorative concrete 
and possibly include a public art mural underneath the uh, train tracks there. The project benefits, uh, one of the main project benefits will be the improvement of water quality. Uh, currently, the slopes are, are pretty eroded and unstabilized, so when it rains, uh, sediment and sometimes trash can um, be discharged down the slopes into the city storm drain systems. And another benefit would be to prevent encampments from forming at the top of the slopes there, uh, which would thereby reduce trash in the area and improve the overall aesthetics of the corridor. Um, and it, I'm not sure if most of you know, but the city drain system is separate from the sanitary sewer system. So anything that flows into the city storm drain system actually flows untreated out to the ocean. So this is one of our one of our stormwater inlets. There's four of them that are adjacent to the uh, project area here. Um, if you'd like to learn more about stormwater quality, I, I encourage you to visit uh, h2oc.org. That's the uh, countywide public education campaign we have going for uh, stormwater education. Estimated project timeline. Uh, as I said, the project is currently in the conceptual design phase. Once the conceptual design is finalized, so the consultant will begin work on the construction plans. Uh, we anticipate those plans to be completed in summer of 2021, perhaps near August or so. Um, and then we anticipate construction to start next fiscal year, 2021, 2022. And it will take approximately six to eight months complete. And this timeline is um, you know, pending funding for construction. All right, so now the fun part, the conceptual design options. So like I said, we have, we have four uh, design options so far, um, and we would love ETAC's feedback on them. Option one, we're calling the arch option. So this, uh, I guess a point of clarification is that whichever design we do pick, it's gonna be consistent along all four slopes. So for simplification purposes, these options are just shown on one slope right now. Um, so this first option is the arch option. And it has a uh, blue streaks with kind of a sandstone texture in between. And as I said, we're going to incorporate, this is a, a depiction of the city's uh, water tower. So we anticipate incorporating some sort of, you know, city logo or, or city icon throughout the, uh, throughout the slopes there. So option one is the arch option. This is kind of what it would look like in a simulated uh, Google Street View here. Option two, we're calling this the geometric option. This is kind of more of a, uh, a boxy option with the same, I believe it's the same or similar uh, sandstone textured concrete with, um, I guess, some sort of oct octagon shape in a blue color in the center there. And this is what it would look like in uh, Google Street View here. Option three, this is my personal favorite. This is the riverine option. Um, you know, kind of gives us a chance to tie in the, the water quality improvement theme, um, as well as the, uh, the nexus to the Santa Ana River and our, our local waterways. Um, so this would also have this sandstone texture, and then it would have a blue river-like water feature uh, weaving through with some cobblestone on each side of the river. So it provides some, some nice texture. And I forgot to mention, this is the First Street stormwater lift station here. So anything that flows into those storm drain inlets underneath the underpass actually goes into this lift station and gets pumped up into the city storm drain onto Santa Fe Street. And this is a street view of the Riverine option. Uh, these, these colors can be slightly modified. It does look a little bit bright in this presentation on, on our end. I don't anticipate the blue being that bright. And option four, uh, we're calling this the abstract option. Um, this one features a series of circular cobblestone features um, with a brown weaving line and some vertical gray lines as well. This is what it would look like in street view. All 
All right. So I don't know what the best process is to go through the vote. Um, I don't know if people want to type their vote in the comments or if we want to go through one by one. I'm not sure how many members are on the line. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight members on the line right now. So okay. yeah, we also welcome any questions that you might have. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's uh, see if you have any questions. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to ask a question. Um, Carl Benninger. When I, yeah, I'm sorry, correct. This is Carl, Carl Benninger. Uh, the, this old, uh, underpass, the, how long ago was this created? Because when I first came to Penn Anna, it was level and it was done so that the tracks wouldn't bother First Street. So how long has the structure been there? Many years, Carl. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> My, 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 my question was, it sounds like it wasn't done right. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, well, uh, originally, that was really uh, originally, it was uh, vegetation with trees on it, but over the years, uh, it has eroded the vegetation and uh, has, uh, you know, died or we lost the vegetation. We lost some of the trees. And because of NPDES, regulations now it, it's a lot more stricter than before so we're having to actually remodel or re-innovate the uh, the first seat underpass the pumping station and uh, like uh, Craig uh, mentioned we, we're having to treat some of the uh, the storm water itself before we deliver it to the other channels or or, or pipes so we, we have to moder modernize this and during the modernization process, we wanted to make it less maintenance than vegetation. And uh, uh, these are the options that we came up with. Gotcha. Now, I, obviously I can't see what you're proposing, but I can, at least the description, I'd, I'd vote for option three. That's just my input and we can move on. Okay. Uh, well, you know, um, what we would like to do is for each commissioner to give us a one through four rating on each option and then we'll sum the uh, the uh, the uh, the points for four being best one uh, being least and so we can go through uh, each uh, each commissioner's vote for options one two three and four and give us a rating from one to four We'll record those down, and then at the end, we would add up the points, and the, the option with most points will uh, give us the go-ahead to finalize the design for that. How does that sound? That sounds good. I would like to make a comment first or ask the Yes. Question. Commissioner Klein, I recognize you for your comment, sir. Thank you. Um, my biggest concern is one of trying to control any graffiti that may uh, be caused. And to me, maybe the options that would uh, discourage gra graffiti are the ones that involve the stones, like options three and four. Maybe it's harder to paint on those surfaces. And I'd like to know if the uh, staff has any opinions on how to minimize the likelihood of, gra of graffiti. Uh, yeah, the plan is to uh, final the, uh, finalize the concrete with anti-graffiti coating, which, ha which has worked for us. Uh, you know, it will be graffiti. We know that, but uh, with the uh, with the coating, it will make it a lot easier for us to clean. So that that is an issue. We keep t dealing with graffiti all over the city, but uh, uh, I think uh, one of these options would would really serve us really well in, in many ways. But again, uh, the surfaces will be treated with anti uh, graffiti coating. Would it be more? Difficult though, then to coat the ones with the stones, like three and four, rather than the smoother surfaces. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly. How I'm not sure. We we can we can. Uh, yeah, we'll look into that. We can look into that. That's uh, that's a good point. 
Yeah, the rougher the surface, the more difficult for them to graffiti, I guess. Or to clean. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> which it will deter more. Good point. Chairman McLaughlin has a question, follow up to uh, Dr. Klein's question is on the arch one, aren't there stones there? So those have layers, the white is all stone and you're saying that the blue is smooth or something in that manner? Uh, the arch does not have stone. It has kind of like a sandstone texture. So it's, it's, not, it's, not, a, it's not 3D per se but it is textured. Here, let me go. Yeah, so it's, it's not raised, but it's this is okay. textured uh, sandstone. Is it like stands concrete? Yeah. And then when you have the graffiti coating, is there ever a time that you have to come in with your beige uh, paint and beige paint <laughs> over anything? Yeah, it's possible. Um, there, there will be some ongoing maintenance that we'll, that we'll have to uh, take care of with these. But I, I suspect that the, the ongoing maintenance will be less of a burden than the current situation with, this, with the eroded slopes. Of course. But option number four is all in brown tones. And the paint they use for graffiti seems to always be a brown <laughs> kind of paint. Yeah, or graffiti contractor actually matches all the surfaces in color uh, with what they're. Could uh, you speak up, Nabil? Uh, yeah, our graffiti contractor does match the colors when it's on walls and such. So uh, we're hoping that, you know, with the anti graffiti coating, uh, all we'll need is pressure washing and the, the paint would be uh, going away or, or the graffiti would go away. Uh, that's the hope. So if the blue area, the, the two items that have that gorgeous blue and it's got graffiti that the company will match that blue? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Why not do a test of these different surfaces with the coating and then see if it does wash away, see if the graffiti, the spray paint does wash away. Okay, we could uh, we can do that. Uh, with the selection of the of the final finish, we could yeah test it, how effective the coating is. But but I think the pattern and the stamped concrete needs to be decided first, and then we right. can test the graffiti coating after to see how effective it is, or if there's something else that we need to do. But I think once we commit to a design. That's how the concrete and the stamping will take a place. Sure. But again, my concern is maybe the coating won't work as well on the uh, on options three and four that have the stones. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's we'll uh, out. difficult for me to vote with the graffiti issue hanging out there. I see several people with their hands raised, so we'll get to you. I just wanted to let you know. I see uh, three, four, five. So. Do we have any other commissioners that have comments before we have the hand raised of our audience? I think Commissioner uh, Vasquez, Sandoval Bailon, and Germain, all three of them have uh, comments or questions. So who um, would like to step forward first? Um, I was wondering um, if I could go up first. Identify yourself, please. Uh, Commissioner Vasquez um, would like to address some comments or questions. Um, is You're there a recognized, way, sir. Is there a way that we could feature possibly murals from local artists or students here in the city? That way to minimize the amount of graffiti because I know murals here in Santa Ana are very respected. Um, people don't usually um, tag on, on murals here. And it'll not only give the city a little more culture, um, it'll give the city an opportunity to, um, to express its culture as well as involve the community in projects that we do. 
Well, th thank you. Thank you for the comment. Uh, there will be an opportunity to add a mural or two on the side slope of the uh, of the walls in the in the underpass itself, but mm. not on the slopes. Uh, it's difficult to do a a mural on the slopes themselves here, um, but there will be opportunities to do on the side slope when you drive right under the railroad. There would be two walls, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, we will provide that opportunity to the uh, uh, Culture and Arts Commission for them to uh, see if a mural can be uh, put on those two walls. Okay. Yeah, we're concerned if, if we offer an opportunity for a mural on the slope itself, that'll get weathered over time and the rainfall against the mural it'll, it could deteriorate pretty quickly. Because there's a lot of water that does slide down there. It's a very sharp incline. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, it's quite steep. Uh, Commissioner Germain, did you have a question? Um, I sent you a request. There you go. Yes. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I believe uh, Commissioner Sandoval was ahead of me, if I'm not mistaken. And we called out the three, four, five commissioners. So I'd like to take a step back and allow her a moment to, to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was very generous, uh, Commissioner Germain. This is Commissioner Sandoval Bailon. I um, echo. Commissioner Vasquez's comments regarding the mural, um, that would be a great idea, but I understand the impact of the slope. Um, my comment is more with regards to the, um, the, how did we get to these designs? And the reason why is because the arches or the, the riverines seem like a, distraction as well when you're driving like it feels like an optical illusion maybe it's just the picture that we're being shown but uh was that taken into account during the design process yeah i believe so you know the color may be uh may may just adding a another depth to it but typically the the blue color uh, wouldn't be as bright as you see here. And these slopes are on the right that uh, I don't think they will be a distraction. Th these slopes are very similar to what Caltrans uses on their side slopes when you're driving the freeways or the underpasses. Um, and they follow the same similar designs and stamped concrete and boulders and some smooth areas like you see here. Uh, the blue will not be a distraction. It will be actually I believe that's going to be an added enhancement to a visual enhancement to when you're going underneath the, uh, the first seat on the pass. Yeah, I don't, I'm not so concerned with the blue. I'm just with the lines. It's just like, whoa, I don't know. I, I guess it's just a personal, a personal thing, we, but we, thank you for that. Sure. We, we see those all the time and, in, in Catherine's designs and, uh, uh, you know, I don't see them as, as uh, distracting, uh, I will look them up. Thank you. Commissioner Germain. Thank you. Um, I, I like to ask uh, with this design, uh, we're removing uh, the trees that are existing there to put in place the, the concrete. So I wanted to know, is uh, adding uh, uh, some other kind of green to this design possible? Or is that the point is to remove the trees that are existing um, and then just fulfill it with all concrete? Um, and also uh, would the uh, pedestrian walkway be impacted as well? Um, is, is it going to expand, shrink? Um, is there going to be uh, uh, anything in place as far as the pedestrian walkway? 
Uh, and, and, and we already addressed the concerns with graffiti um, be pretty pretty heavily. And I, I was concerned as well with the light color um, graffiti or uh, uh, or the uh, for the slope uh, securement. I, I thought maybe a deeper color, uh, deeper tone. Also, uh, something rugged is, is I, I do agree with that. Something rugged will hopefully uh, keep uh, those who you know, choose to do graffiti off, off of those uh, slopes. But um, I also think some short shrubs or some kind of, some kind of plant will uh, you know, be beneficial, keeping someone off the slope for graffiti and also capturing any kind of uh, uh, runoff, whether it's a paper cup from McDonald's, from, from, from a fast food place or shopping bags that are going down the hill, will catch it before you even get to the storm drain. Otherwise, everything is just gonna run right off into that, you know, that new storm drain uh, filtration system. Um, you know, hopefully uh, uh, we can do something to catch it before then. Uh, I think I can address uh, maybe a couple of the questions. First off, the pedestrian uh, sidewalk uh, adjacent to the, uh, to the driving lanes, those will remain. Um, the, the purpose of, the, um, of this project is to prevent further erosion. Uh, so yes, removal of, the, removal of the landscaping is on purpose, although staff, the city and ETAC love trees. It's unfortunate that a couple of these trees are not in great health. And we, uh, we intend to replace the trees, maybe not directly on these slopes, but in the immediate uh, adjacent area. And as far as trash coming down the slopes, uh, yeah, absolutely, that's a possibility. We didn't get into the details, but the project will contain some fencing at the top of the slopes which will prevent uh, some of the uh, homelessness, uh, trespassing that, that's occurring at the top that's leading into the trash right now coming down the slopes. So we think that the, with this project and the fencing, we will be able to clean the area up and keep it clean. Um, so I think that that addresses uh, some of the questions. I think these are great questions, uh, very uh, insightful and intuitive. Um, uh, we thought that the, uh, the tree questions uh, were going to come up because, after all, uh, ETAC's uh, focus has been trees. Um, and so we, um, we think that we can re have replacement trees in the immediate area. Were there more questions? I think I addressed a, a couple of them, at least. There's one more. Uh, Commissioner Germain, uh, let me see if I can unmute you. Yes, uh, thank you for that. That was that was very uh, very clear uh, response. I appreciate that. Um, with removal of the tree, is it possible to put some kind of low shrub, some kind of uh, uh, drought tolerant type shrub. It doesn't have to be a, a, you know, a tree or anything that's going to stand above a person, because as we know, that eventually would uh, create a wall on the upper slope uh, to allow people to hide out in between the, the fence and the slope with that easement. But uh, maybe a, some kind of flowering shrub that's drought tolerant that would still catch a plastic bag, also uh, prevent graffiti being done and no, it's just something that I don't know if you guys had considered. Are you interested in having the shrubs on the top of the slope or the bottom of the slope? Uh, I was interested on the slope, so neither top or bottom, but incorporated into your 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 design there. Um, you know, whether it's uh, in between, you know, where the blue goes goes white to blue on the the, the wavy. Uh, rendition that you have maybe that white area could be some kind of some kind of uh, uh, shrubbery or some some drought tolerant shrubbery 
Yeah, the idea of, of this whole project is not to go back to shrubs because we've tried that for years and we've had really difficult time dealing with uh, the shrubs, keeping them alive and keeping them maintained. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the shrubs really were capturing the bags like you were describing and creating an unsightly uh, visual of the underpass itself because the shrubs themselves catches the, uh, uh, the, the trash flying by or, or going by. And so it, it becomes a maintenance issue, which we've struggled with uh, on these slopes for years. Uh, so really the idea is not to go back with vegetation and the required irrigation system. Uh, we wanted to make it uh, a lot simpler to, to maintain. And that's really the objective. At the same time, like William was mentioning, is on the top of the slope, we have had issues. And in fact, we're dealing with these issues as we speak with PD, a police department, and that there is encampments on top of the slopes. And we really wanted to get this project designed and, and uh, to deal with these issues, pressing issues, to make sure that uh, the encampments no longer can uh, uh, be there. Uh, and that's, that's really, uh, the, the, the entire, uh, one of the purposes of this project, of this project is to, to deal with not only stormwater runoff and capturing, but also the encampment on top. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's apparent that this uh, project is a tough one to, uh, uh, to remedy because of the high traffic volume, uh, you know, pedestrians going through the encampments and things going on in that nature and the trash and the storm drains and then also with the rail system there. Um, my hats go off to you guys. You know, that's that's a tough project and, and take maintenance in consideration because you know it's 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 a tough one. Exactly. The, 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 Thank you for your hard work. We wanted to come up with a design that is easy to maintain and uh, you know like Caltrans is probably the <laughs> the best example of you know, maintenance-free uh, designs. So we, we are, uh, you know, trying to do what Caltrans does on the slopes. And, you, you know, you, you will get graffiti, then, you know, we have a graffiti crew contractor that can deal with these issues. And, uh, uh, you know, I can't tell you graffiti will not happen if it's right. blue, if it's green, or if it's black, you know. <laughs> if it's black, they'll use white paint if it's, you right. know. So they're, they're creative and it will get graffiti, but we're ready to deal with those issues. Appreciate your, your hard work. You guys' diligence is awesome. Thank you. Uh, Chair McLaughlin, I've got a, I've got a question. Yes, Dan. recognizing Dan. I, I got a question about the, uh, the graffiti, uh, obviously the, 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 the graffiti spray or it, that, that we're gonna apply. Um, do you, do you know how long that lasts? And um, do we have uh, funding to reapply the uh, anti-graffiti uh, spray in a, it, at certain times because it's going to be in the sun all the time. That way we can keep, keep it looking clean and fresh all the time. Um, because I, did, I would hate just to be painting it um, every time that it uh, gets uh, sprayed because we know that's going to happen. Um, are you guys uh, have any information on that? Uh, I'll have to look up the, uh, the, the specifications of the coating, but- The coating, does, yes. Yeah, it, it, it does, and you, we probably have to apply it every so often. Yeah, because of the ultraviolet, you know, the, yeah. the sun and everything that hits it. Um, I'm not just, sure Pedro is on the line. Pedro, are, are you listening in? Yeah, I saw him on there. Yeah, he's here. You're muted, Pedro. Okay, there you go. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pedro Guillen, Deputy Public Works Director for Maintenance Services. Thank you for the, uh, for the question. The commissioner's um, graffiti is a major problem in our city. The program is an excellent program. So um, I can tell you that normally we, uh, in these situations, will pressure wash when it's concrete, things of that nature. 
when there's a special coating on there, we, it depends on the type of coating. So there's numerous types of coatings. Some have a thickness component to it where you have to hand remove. We don't recommend that because a technician or a staff member can be there for an hour removing it just on that. So there's others where you can wash it off. So there's a variety. So uh, further investigation, further evaluation of the materials will have to be looked at. And we'll, we'll obviously be working with engineering on that. But there's a variety of components. Um, someone mentioned, I think, earlier that we paint uh, tan or scar. We don't do graffiti scars. That's what we call those. We do 100% color matching or pressure washing. So if you see a graffiti scar, that's not us. It's not the city. Um, so we're very proud of that. But um, anyway, we, we will work with engineering on the variety of uh, appropriate and uh, obviously economical as well, but effective graffiti coatings. There's, there's so many on the market and so many varieties. So obviously funding's a factor as well, but absolutely it would have to be reapplied uh, every so often. Right, that, that's, my, that's my question is making sure that we try to keep applying it so we don't have that the issue with the with the, um, the the scarring and stuff. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. So are we ready to move on to vote? Uh, Chair McLaughlin, okay. uh, Commissioner Vasquez has just one more question to ask. Yes. Um, is there any way where we can expand the sidewalk as well? Um, because I feel like it's not enough space to have two people going down the same walkway, if that makes sense. Um, I know I've been walking down that overpass before and I've had someone going down the bike and um, towards me while I was walking and it feels kind of unsafe having him just kind of like rushing down real quick and not having enough space to like kind of like go around me as well. Thank you, Commissioner Vasquez for the question. Um, and I have noticed that and I know that the sidewalk is narrow on both sides, <laughs> the north and the south of the underpass, but we are limited with the span uh, of the bridge for the railroad. Uh, we can't go beyond, uh, otherwise it becomes a major project for us to rebuild that bridge. So we are limited uh, with the bridge span itself and we wanted to keep and maximize the two lanes uh, that we have, uh, the two lanes in one direction, two lanes in the other direction on First Street, that, that, that's our, engineering limitation really for, for the first seat underpass. If it's up to me, I would have loved to make it wider and uh, um, you know maybe reconfigure what we're dealing with here in terms of <clears throat> slopes and make them vertical walls. But um, uh, that is not an option at this point of time. The sidewalk width is limited and, and I realize that, uh, but that's all we could, we could have at this point. Great question. Do we have any other commissioners questions? I'd like to um, review that the number four is the best, number three, number two, and number one is the one that you don't like um, when, when the voting. So we're giving numbers. So like voting for number one, my understanding is we each give a number uh, from one to four per design, and then it's calculated. Is that correct, uh, Secretary? Yes, that's how I understand it. So then do we have any commissioners voting for option number one, which was the arch with the blue water? So no commissioners are voting for the blue water arches. Yeah, can we can we go by a commissioner and get the rating on? Exactly. Each? Thank you. I got confused. Thank you, Nabil. Can we um, put them back on the screen? Do you think that would be helpful? The options. They're on my screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. So if you want to be able to see what's on the screen, you can go ahead and select view and on the top right hand corner, and then you can go ahead and see side by side speaker. Okay, thank you. 
So do we have any commissioners voting for the arch number one? And we start with each commissioner is ranking it, um, correct? Yes. So is there any particular order, Lori, that we can ask for the commissioners? Go ahead and do it by um, Janelle McLaughlin first. Oh, good. Well, Janelle McLaughlin likes the arches of the uh, freshness and the newness of the arches. So I uh, vote number four for the, um, the arches. Okay, I thought we were voting each one. We were rating them. What would be, oh. your, what would be your number three? Oh, I understand now, thank you. My number three would be uh, the ravine. Okay. And then um, my number two would be the um, brown, let's see, abstract design. Okay. And then which the last one, which geometric. Which is that? Four. Okay. Okay, next commission. So, so just, just to be clear, these are the number of points. So uh, Commissioner McLaughlin, you assigned option one, four points. Option two, one point. Option three, three points. And option four, two points. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you for always keeping me on track. <laughs> <laughs> and next would be Dan Orgel. Okay. Um, option one, three. Option two, two. Option three, four. And option four, uh, one. Is that good? Mm -hmm. and next would be Mike Macris. Oh, Lord. Okay. Uh, now, the one you like the best is the four, right? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to go backwards. Uh, I like number three the best. Um, And then the second one I like the best is, uh, <clears throat> wait a minute, uh, number one. And uh, the next one would be four. And the last one would be the arch thing. No, not the arch thing, the mm -hmm. geometric design. Option two. Yes. Okay, uh, Commissioner Sandoval Bailon. Let me see if I can unmute you. Thank here. you. Oh, there you go. Option one, one. Option two, four. Option three, two. Option four, Three. Thank you. Next is uh, Commissioner Klein. <clears throat> okay. Uh, option one gets one point. Option two gets three points. Option three gets two points. Option four gets four points. Commissioner Benninger? Yes. Option one. Yeah, option one, I will give two points. Option two, I will give three points. Option three, I will give four points. And option four, I will give one. Okay, Commissioner Vasquez. Um, option one, I'll give two points. Option two, I'll be giving it three points. Option three will be given four points. Option four will be given, am I left with one point, correct? Yes. Yeah, that would be my one point. Thank you. Commissioner Germain. Mm -hmm.
Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Jermaine, uh, option one, three points. Option two, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Option one, two points. Option two, three points. Option three, four points. Option four, one. Thank you. Thank you. And that should do it, right? Did I get everybody? So, okay. So we are adding the points as we speak. Oh, okay, great. We are doing the math. All right, so the preferred option appears to be option three, the riverine design, followed by option two, the geometric design, followed by option one, the arch design, followed by option four, the abstract design. Well, it looks like the winner is option three, the riverine design. So is there a motion to approve, uh, approve uh, option four, the riverine design? You mean option three? Correct. Oh, excuse me, option three, thank you. So moved. <laughs> uh, please identify Michael yourself. Matthews. Michael Matthews. So, Mike, you made the motion, the first motion. Okay, uh, make a second one. <laughs> yes. And the second motion is made by Carl Benninger. Thank you. Okay, so for the first street slope stabilization, there is a motion from Commissioner Macri's and a second by Commissioner, which commissioner was that? Benninger. Benninger. So the vote is for a motion by Commissioner Macri's and seconded by Commissioner Benninger for ETEC to select option three for the first street slope stabilization project. Uh, does anybody abstain? No? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call out the votes. Uh, Commissioner Sandoval Bailon. Yes. Commissioner Benninger? Yes. Commissioner Germain? Yes. Commissioner Klein? Yes. Commissioner Macris? Yes. Commissioner Orajel? You're muted, sir. I don't think we have the right to unmute yes. our <laughs> Thank you, yes. Okay, Commissioner Vasquez? Yes. And Chair McLaughlin? Yes. Thank then, you, Commissioners, for this. Uh, it will make our life a lot easier. Like it is unanimous, thank you. Thank you for your vote and uh, we will keep you uh, up to date on option three design as the design progresses. And uh, uh, my commitment is to keep you informed on the progress of this project. I am looking forward for it. It's uh, something that is very dear to my heart that we keep, we keep it going, designed and built. Uh, I, I think it will add uh, to the city uh, uh, visual enhancement and uh, it, will, it will do us really well in, in, in terms of maintenance. Looking forward for it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
I like to compliment the, the, the skill of moving forward and adding color, which is outstanding for our city. Um, let's move on to item six on the business calendar, which are the tree species guide and the tree planting update and staff's recommendation on um, is to receive this item. A discussion of the item will be uh, entertained and questions will be entertained as soon as the staff presentation is done. So is that Pedro that's doing the presentation? Yes, I'd like to introduce Pedro. It's item number five, yes. Item five. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to provide you, uh, provide an update on our, our uh, tree planting efforts, specifically the tree species guide. And we, we will also be uh, providing some additional information based on some questions we received from the chair last week. So we're glad to do that. Um, if uh, this presentation can be shared, uh, Chris, uh, Lori, can you put that on there? Yes, I believe so, just a moment. Got to find your name on here. Good luck. Good luck. You should have access to do that now, Pedro. Okay. Daisy did it. Okay. Uh, before before you start, I need to excuse myself. I'm working in a voting center, and I need to get back to it. So uh, uh, let me just turn off my phone. Excuse myself, and I'll I'll go from there. Thank you for your service of working the voting center. Thank you, Commissioner Benninger. Uh, thank you very, very much. Good night now. Good night. Hi, can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so thank you for the, uh, oh, jumped over here. I'm on the wrong, wrong panel here. So thank you for bearing me with us here. So we wanted to provide you an update, as I mentioned, on the efforts that the ad hoc committee put into updating the tree species manual about a year ago, and as well providing you an overview, providing an overview regarding our tree program and some updates as well as up, updating the new uh, commissioners that are, uh, that are on the uh, commission. So thank you for the opportunity once again. Um, so very quickly on this tree species guide, um, back in January of uh, last year, back, uh, made a motion to create an ad hoc committee to update the tree species manual at that point it was called the manual and on january 31st there was a, the first ad hoc committee meeting uh, by members uh, mclaughlin and schmidt which is a former uh, member and uh, commissioner klein uh, at that point uh, among other items discussed uh, three objectives were were established uh, which were to up, basically update the guide, uh, include a one-page summary overview, and I will showcase that, and review the list of the trees, making sure they're good trees and compatible. So uh, back in June, we did provide the draft update to the committee, the ad hoc committee, and shortly after, we did receive comment and incorporated those comments into the document um, at the require, requ uh, request of the committee. The ad hoc committee, we did send it over to planning and building to make sure that, uh, to see if they had any questions. As you know, as you may know, planning is on site, on property, larger spaces. Uh, our trees are street trees, so there are more confined spaces. So it's a different, they have a different palette of trees. They have over 200 trees, and those are for parking lots, private areas, uh, open areas. So anyway, they had no comments. Uh, we did talk to them and review it with them. So subsequently, we finalized all the comments and prepared a final draft for, for uh, E-Tax review. Unfortunately, we haven't had a meeting in a while, so we're glad to present this to you. So um, as mentioned, the previous manual was updated over the years. It was uh, a little outdated, I'd say, design-wise. It needed to be in compliance with or closer in, in conformity with the city's general standards and colored. So you see the over the uh, basic premise of the previous uh guidebook it was outdated it did have some tree information the botanical names and then some description so we worked on that with comments uh, from the ad hoc committee and we updated it and improved it we feel it's a nice document it was included in the packet so basically we updated the design 
provides the and improve the design, uh, provide the quick reference reference uh, matrix, which is uh, I think a very quick review a sheet that uh, is available to everyone to review. And then obviously updated the the graphics and the summaries of each uh, each of the species. So it, it does look uh, tremendously better, obviously, than the previous. It is updated, and it, we believe it will be very useful for the community as well as uh, ETAC in terms of um, reviewing and referencing uh, city uh, approved trees. These are trees that have been approved that are on the municipal, in the municipal code um, and obviously blessed for the years uh, with, with, with by ETAC and staff. So uh, it's updated, it looks great, we believe, and we wanna thank you for your commitment in, in helping us improve this. Uh, over the last year. So that's the document. I'll, I'm going to go into some additional slides and we can backtrack into questions as the committee has. So um, we were asked as well to provide a tree planting update and we're, we're glad to provide this to you. We're excited about this effort. Uh, we did present uh, uh, an initiative to you back December, if I'm not mistaken, of 2019. We had a goal to plant 300 trees plus by a certain date. So we're very excited to let you know that we are actively planting. We planted uh, over 109 trees uh, as of this presentation, uh, when it was prayers at 109, but we're actively planting daily among all of our other tasks. Um, we did notify all of the neighborhoods by letter, by email, by phone. And we did, after a little bit of nagging, we did actually get, it responded and, uh, we did uh, in the first phase of planting requests, we do not notify the properties. We did get 23 refusals from residents. However, that has minimized tremendously. Uh, due to the pandemic, we did freeze our operation. As you can imagine, uh, we had stock issues from trees. We had safety issues among our staff and generally resources were unavailable. So uh, we, we typically do not plant in the summer. So we paused it and began as soon as we were able to after October in late fall, early winter. So um, you can see staff actively planting here. Uh, these are a great effort, great team. Um, they really like uh, this part of their job. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to provide that. So additional information um, in terms of, a question was brought up in terms of how we determine how many trees uh, uh, are allocated per neighborhood. Um, so basically we had at this point uh, 200 trees that we, that we wanted to plant at this, in this phase. At that point we had over a, uh, about a thousand vacancies and um, we determined how many vacancies we had per ward and came up with the percentage of the total. And then that percentage was multiplied into the total of 200 producing the number of trees per ward. So we went even further than that and we went through every neighborhood. So this was a voluminous amount of time and effort to identify where we had vacancies and to contact the property. So we went through every neighborhood, identified every property on this phase. Again, it's gonna be multiple phases. And, you know, this is how we got 200 trees. So we have a lot of feedback from the residents. Some are very excited and waiting for their tree. So we were very, very happy about this, this process. And if a resident in the neighborhood declines a tree, we will reinvest our energy to find, to find another vacancy within that neighborhood. If they, another resident declines it again, then we'll take a step back and maintain that tree within that ward. So there's a lot of effort that goes into it. There's a lot of time and commitment by our staff. So um, we want to make sure that every neighborhood has an opportunity to get a tree based on our uh, resources. So here is the map of the trees that we planted in the past, uh, really in the past uh, three or four months. So we've been working around the entire city. As you can see, this is about 110 and change. Uh, tree. So it, it's, it's citywide. We're not focusing on one area. Uh, our canopy is lush and we want to maintain it everywhere in terms of uh, within our resources as well, but we would like to plant everywhere. Um, so this just gives you an, an idea of where we're at, where we're uh, planting. 
Uh, moving forward, there was a question by a commissioner regarding our tree planting budget. So in our bu current budget, uh, in our tree services, it is tree services slash sanitation pro budget item. And you'll see that there on the slide. Uh, there are other programs that are funded non-related to trees in this budget item, but specifically for tree plantings and machinery and repair, we identify $50,000. So the $50,000 can be utilized to rep make repairs to equipment and machines and things of that nature. But we're focusing on trees 100% this year. Uh, we're hoping we don't have any mechanical breakdowns on our equipment, but uh, so far so good. So we're focusing $50,000 on tree plantings. That's, that's pretty much what we dedicate every year uh, when we have it. So uh, we're committed to do that again and we will we actually asked for additional funds next year. So hopefully that is considered in the, in the future budget. Uh, additionally, we were asked uh, about grants and, and what we do to pursue grants. Um, grants are challenging in one sense, beneficial in the other. Uh, we do have one grant and we've talked about this before and for the new commissioners, I'll explain this. We received a California Urban, Urban Council grant where, where we are uh, where the grant funds up to 150 tree removals at no cost to the city in exchange the city has to plant two trees for every removal. So this is a good deal for the city. Uh, removals can be costly depending on size and effort. So uh, it, it's, it's a very valuable uh, grant and uh, we're looking for more grants as we speak. The city public works agency does have an on-call consultant who works with all staff, including us on tree grants. And we've been in communication with them on this as well. There are some challenges sometimes where the city is required to provide in-kind funding and we don't have any additional funding that we really have. So we have those challenges. We also have other grants that we can apply for. However, the planting standards are smaller than what our plant, the, the trees are smaller than our planting uh, requirements. So we do actually uh, talk to our parks department and they can put them in parks. So we've been successful in getting additional trees in the city that route. So um, anyway, the, the budget is, is, is posted online. You can go through it in detail and the link is provided there. Um, moving further, uh, we were asked to provide an organizational chart of the maintenance services division. I'm very happy to present this to you, uh, especially again for the new, the new members. Um, we have a very talented group of individuals, public works professionals. We have eight service programs. We have our administrative services section within our division that handles all the administrative and budgeting functions. We have street sweeping and graffiti. Graffiti, as I mentioned earlier, we, we don't leave scars or the great paint someone mentioned earlier. We don't, that's not us. We are 100% color matching. We work seven days a week. And I can tell you last year, because I updated the numbers again this morning, last calendar year, we removed over 180,000 graffiti tags. So that's equivalent to about 80, 80 football fields in square footage. So just, it's, it's, a, it's a huge amount of graffiti in our city. The program is constant in seven days a week. We have one of the best programs around. We've actually gone into other cities to present over the years on what we do and, and we do have a service partner as well and uh, other cities copy our program so we're very happy about it we can always use more resources uh, our removal average is under 24 hours a day our requirement is under 48 hours so it could be within one one day or three or four days but the average is 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 under 48 typically the same day um, street sweeping we sweep 50,000 miles and we do residentials weekly in commercials. Um, we do have a homeless issue, a growing homeless issue. So we've created a new program in our city, in our division. We're trying to get staffed up on that. It's within existing staff. So we just reallocated staff to this program. That is a challenge. It's an ongoing challenge. As mentioned on the first street underpass, um, we've replanted there over the years. And we just stopped over the last couple of years because it was, it was a large expense where it didn't produce the benefit that we wanted. We do clean it, we spray it, we it, but uh, it's an ongoing maintenance issue. And we do uh, police it with the, with the police department on a sometimes daily, sometimes multiple times a day. 
So as mentioned earlier, we're trying to, we're trying to mitigate those issues by improving that area of the city. But um, the, the homeless services program is, is really touching all of our operations. And then tree operations, uh, as uh, I'll get into more detail on this, but we do have nine dedicated public works tree professionals. And um, I'll get more into detail on the next slide. Um, going further, we have roadway maintenance and uh, general maintenance. We do have a contract administrator. We also have environmental sanitation, which is our right of way inspection, similar to code enforcement. We have we have inspectors in the streets. So they, they oversee that. And then we have illegal dumping, which is uh, our roadway cleaning, which is illegal dumping, miscellaneous sidewalk cleaning, weed abatement. And I can tell you last year we were removed off of our streets about 11,000, over 11,000 illegal dumped items. That's couches, mattresses, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally we have the roadway markings and, uh, and signs program and, and, and medians. And, and I know we're gonna have a medium presentation. So uh, we'll talk about that later on. But uh, overall we have 49 staff, we have 18 vacancies. So it's a kind of a challenge to everything in red is a vacant individual. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we do last year in total, we, we service the community with 225,000 plus services. That's over 900 a day. That's, that's a huge, huge amount of work. Trees alone, we trimmed over 18,000. 18, and in trees, we responded to over 1,600 special requests. That's arborist inspections and special tree services, non-pruning. Non so we're very busy. Um, we're a very busy division. We do have some very key uh, vacancies. So I'm very proud of our staff, as I know uh, many, of the, many of the public are as well. So going on to trees, um, I want to talk, highlight a little bit of our, uh, uh, of our staff. We have a very dedicated team in the tree section. Um, we have multiple arborists. We have multiple trimmers certified trimmers and we have tree risk assessors. Frank Torres, who I'm sure many of you know, uh, he's been a supervisor for about four years. He's been in tree and tree operations for over 25 years. So he knows what he's talking about when we rely on him heavily. Uh, Luis Femat is the tree services crew leader. He's in addition to arborist, he's also a certified tree worker, qualified applicator, and he's a certified ISA. ISA is International Society of Arborists. And he's a, Tree risk assessor, very highly sought after certification. We're very proud on that. We're increasing on that. We also have two additional uh, ISA certified tree trimmers with over 20, 20 years of experience. Uh, in total, we have nine dedicated staff in the division. As you, you saw, we have some vacancies. Over and above that, we have someone who just likes trees and is an arborist uh, working in a different section. He's also a certified tree worker, qualified applicator license, which is over and above a uh, uh, certificate. So he's very dedicated. In terms of contact, the information's there. Uh, the best way to report tree services, tree service requests is through the app. It's geocoded and uh, we can respond fast and, and go from there, but you can also email staff here. And it goes to say that we love trees. I love trees. Our staff is very dedicated. <laughs> so um, we, we, we are very happy about our tree program. So um, a little bit of, out of our about our uh, tree man management system, tree inventory system, we do have a program, I know uh, called Arbor Access. It's a, a co-op with our uh, tree pruning contractor, and basically this is what this is the database of all of our trees. Uh, it, it holds our service and tree health records, and we utilize this to uh, care for the trees. So it is highly accurate. It's almost real time. The only reason I don't see real time is because sometimes we have to go back to the office and look at additional inf information before we upload it into the system. Uh, but it's, it's essentially real time and up to date. The GPS is precise with basically with, within three to five feet of the actual tree. So it is a very good system. It's reliable. It's up to date. It's accurate. It's what we need and what we want. And we create our service efforts uh, through this, develop our service efforts. As I mentioned, uh, we did do a lot of work last year over our goal. Our goal was 15,000 trees uh, to trim last year. We trimmed 18. So uh, obviously there's a cost associated with that. Um, and uh, we did complete about 1,600 
arborist service requests, uh, and that can be from anything from evaluating a tree uh, to, to just customer service. So we're very dedicated in that, in that sense. But here's some examples of what the program produces. You have a quick snap of our 10 most uh, uh, top 10 trees in our city. The sycamore tree is, is, is uh, we have over 6,000. 6, Brisbane Box has a lot of queen palms. Jacarandas, as you, as you may not know, but some of you may not know, but Jacarandas is official city tree. A very, very nice tree once it flowers. Uh, it has some challenges, but it, we love it. Uh, in total, we have close to 48,000 trees, and that's a living number, depending on how many we plant. And trees are, you know, I don't want to say they're like human, but they're very close to it in the way they, they live. They have a natural lifespan, and so they fluctuate on the numbers. Uh, we do have a valuation of $175 million for urban forest. So we, we don't take that lightly. Our investment over the last 40 years in trees as a city is huge. So we, we are the caretakers of this urban forest and we value that tremendously. Um, a little more information on the tree program. This is just a snapshot of what we do. This particular address has a work history. So all the information is in the system. If we get a service call from this resident, we can go on the system and look up any previous calls, any future calls, including service records, and we provide that information and use it accordingly to, for the benefit of the tree and provide obviously information to the public and educate. So the system is very, very uh, reliable. Uh, I can tell you that the creator of the system relies on the city of Santa Ana as a test case to test the system because we use it so often and so accurately and we're meticulous. We've been, we made that initiative several years to be Technology, technologically sound in this in this arena and in other arenas. So we are very proud of uh, utilizing this program. Um, a little more information on other programs. Um, let me jump ahead here, uh, but and then I'll open it up to uh, to questions if there are any. But uh, just some benefits on the trees in our community in any community. Uh, trees contribute to cooling and energy costs by over thirty percent, depending on where the trees are planted. So there's a lot of in, uh, benefits. Uh, they can obviously increase increase property values. They do, that's a fact. Uh, three to 15%, depending on uh, the areas, but definitely improves the uh, benefit in the neighborhoods. And then obviously it creates a stimulus in terms of economic growth, tourism, and the fact, uh, and factors of that nature. Um, and uh, improves our water quality and our uh, ground uh, supply. So our water table improves it in this method. The average tree per the uh, Arbor Day Foundation is over $500. That's how much it costs uh, basically on average to maintain a tree. So when we have tree removal requests that, that'll come to you eventually, um, they do come up once in a while by the public for a, for a healthy tree. We evaluate it and we typically unless there's some major infrastructure issue or safety issue, uh, we recommend denial of a healthy tree. You know, if, if it's a dangerous tree or unhealthy, we will evaluate it and remove it on our own for, for such reasons. But so when someone comes in and requests a tree to be removed, we uh, really put a lot of effort into evaluating the tree and uh, they do have to pay for the tree removal. So, or plant, pay for uh, the cost of the tree and then we'll, reinvest those funds uh, in the, by tree plant, by planting another tree in that area. So uh, we are very dedicated in terms of trees and our, our operations in general, and we're very happy to, to uh, provide the service to the community. So if I didn't mention it before, we do love trees and we're very proud to say it. And um, it's been a challenging year for all of us, but uh, we're, we're, we're happy to provide this information to you. Uh, having said that, uh, if there are any questions, I'm open. And we have uh, Arturo, who's the projects manager, Arturo Rodriguez. We have Frank Torres, the arbor, our city arborist, on, on uh, as well. So if there are any questions, we can go ahead and, uh, and uh, take them. OK, um, this is Janelle McLaughlin. And of course, I would have a tree question, Pedro. But what I'd like to say first. Yes is that this is so uplifting and outstanding to look at because four years ago, 
when the water was turned off and our trees were dying and the updated species book is drought tolerant. You did everything that ETAC asked you to do and more. And um, I know you're proud of utilizing the system, but I'm very proud to, that we have the system. And I've never seen anything in the four years I've been on ETAC so outstanding. So I wanted to thank you of that, sir. Thank you, thank you. Here, here. We're very proud of our staff and we thank you for your support. What I do like to tell the new members is that what, what had happened is that the city council told us um, to turn off the waters and the medians and um, we just turned off the water. And it, actually we could have left the water on trees. And so over the past four years, we've gone in and done some deep root watering for drought situations. We did some uh, medium redesigns with drought tolerant. The way the species book is done, it mentions drought and you can call out a tree. Um, that species book is used constantly. And I actually think it wasn't updated for what, 20 years, Pedro? It was touched upon, but you're, you're, you're accurate. It's about 15 years, yes. You know, 15 to 20 years is the same. Yeah. So um, my one question is that watching the median work um, that was up, upgraded, did all the trees get deep root watering or are they just using the sprinklers next to the trees? They, they are using the existing infrastructure and I think we're gonna talk about that in the next presentation. If I'm not Thank mistaken. you, sir, sorry to jump forward. Okay, perfect. So do we have any uh, further questions or any other questions on item five? So um, let's move on to item six, the business I calendar. I see a question from Commissioner Klein. I recognize Commissioner Klein's question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that thorough presentation. Uh, it was excellent. How can we get a copy of the new tree species guide? Uh, could you put a website in the minutes or in the chat box? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Klein. We actually did attach it to the agenda and then oh. once this me meeting was uh, finalized, we were gonna send you a nice little brochure. Okay. So we already have them printed out. We're gonna mail them to, to each one of you and we have them ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. So would you like to explain what that, who uses that, uh, that book is, does the planning department use it? Does the homeowner use it? Does the neighborhood association use it? How is that book used, that species book? So it's a quick reference book for anyone who wants to be educated just on our city trees. In addition to that, developers, we, re we refer this to developers who are building a project and may, may impact the sidewalks and that nature. Planning does review it for those projects. However, uh, we dictate what trees and what goes on the sidewalk, obviously. Um, on site, it's different. They have their palette of preferred trees on site. So uh, that, those are the individuals, but we do have just people from the East Coast. I've talked to people over the years and our previous assistant manager, uh, just because they wanted to learn what Santa Ana does. So they refer, we refer them to the book. So uh, basically anyone and anyone who's interested in trees can review it. It's a quick reference. It's not overly inundated with information, but it's really good. And it will be on our website. As soon as we, we end a meeting tonight, we're gonna upload that information and have it ready for the public. Thank you. So uh, moving on to the meeting and island improvement of 2020 and uh, Look forward to hearing about that. It's it's going to be a, just a staff report that's received and filed. There's no voting that we're going to have on this. Yes, that's uh, that's correct for the median report. Um, Lori, I was wondering if you can give me control because I, then I can just put the four slides that I have to uh, talk about right now. Is that possible? Yes. Just a moment, please. You should have access now. Oh, they're in the um, 
They're in the conference room. No, Lori, uh, William has his own. Oh, William has his own. Yeah, I'm in my little laptop here. And, and they both have access. Okay, very good. Both William and the uh, main room. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. This is a little bit small. I'm going to try to make it a little bit larger here. Okay, well, so okay, it'll shrink and give it a second or two. It's getting cut off at the bottom. Are you helping me, Lori? Is that, is that what you're doing? Um, no. <laughs> Hold on. No, that's all you, William. Is it a PowerPoint? No, it's just some slides that I have to video. Oh, because if it's not a PowerPoint, sometimes it doesn't take it very well. It's, it looks like it's a PDF document. You can go up uh, to the upper right hand tab. It says 150 per cent right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I thought I'd change that. All right. Okay. Let's start off here. I'll struggle through this. Anyway, I, I just wanted to start off by uh, uh, letting you know, of course, William Galvez, it's been a long time since I've uh, seen some of you and I'm looking forward to meeting uh, the uh, new commissioners. Uh, uh oh, this has a mind. Okay, there you go. <laughs> End of its, own. it's back up to 150%. Right next to the hand. Okay. Gosh. I apologize, this is really clumsy. I should have just gone with a PowerPoint. All right, I'm just gonna go. Okay, so. This is a really, really good feel good story about the support that we've received by uh, ETAC over the years. For many years, ETAC has advocated for trees and just the overall aesthetics of the city. And uh, for many years, uh, many of the commissioners were asking why more funds were not being dedicated to, to trees and to landscaping and to just, uh, just the overall aesthetics of the city. Um, Every year a request would be made. We'd, we'd send in our requests into the budget and every year we would be turned down. The, the request would be for general funds because we don't have any other dedicated funding for trees and for landscaping. So lo and behold, with the new leadership in place with our new city manager, Christine, our new uh, public works director, Nabil, uh, uh, February of 2020 in doing the budget, uh, we noticed that there could possibly be some general funds available for uh, doing some uh, landscape medians. Uh, so we fast track a project. In February, Nabil asked me to look into completing, planting all of the medians in the city. And of course, uh, I, I knew that planting all of the medians would take eight to eight to ten million dollars. Uh, Nabil gave me the instructions to budget anywhere between two and a half and three and a half million dollars. So, um, and you know what, this is moving around. I'm not touching my computer. It's just <laughs> moving around. So, I thought I was looking at a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. Here. No, no, I know. William, this is Pedro. 
Yeah. I uh, let me try to share my screen. I I have that PDF. So okay. let me try to let me try to get it up for you. How's that? I'll, I can run it for you. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay. So, so this was a a, a very uh, a tall order to spend all these millions of dollars in medians that we didn't even have a design for. We didn't have any guidance for what landscape materials we were going to be using. Um, so we fast tracked the project. We got the city manager to authorize us to use a, a landscape architect. And we engaged the landscape architect in, in one week. We got proposals. We got them on, on board, which is unheard of uh, for the city. Uh, we, uh, we came up with a preliminary scope um, in, um, in March. We did the bidding in April. We used existing construction contractors that we had out working in the city. And the goal by Nabil was to complete all of the median work before the end of the fiscal year. Well, I, I didn't quite, we didn't quite meet that. Uh, we ended up planting the medians between June and September of uh, 2020. Uh, when we kicked off this effort, uh, Pedro was there with me. Danelle, who since retired, was there with me. We met with the, uh, with the designer. We took uh, several field runs. And what we came up with is this uh, second uh, sheet. Uh, Pedro, if you can go to the second sheet. What we came up with, this is just the cover page. We identified all of the median locations where we thought we could make a difference in the city. And we came up with several different concepts. Uh, based on these concepts, we refined what the budget was. It gravitated more towards the lower end of the two and a half to three and a half million. It gravitated more to two and a half million, but we used uh, this, the, a, a uh, a uh, design by a landscape architect. You can read at the bottom right-hand corner, uh, landscape architect firm is MS plus MEGT. They did a fantastic job. They turned everything around in about two or three weeks. And then we use this to then uh, approach several of our construction contractors to get bids. And we could use an existing construction contracts to get a quick bid. And then we, uh, we approached the city council with these bids. And if you can go to the next uh, slide, uh, uh, Pedro. These were the locations of the medians that we ended up with. Uh, and we approached uh, two construction contractors that we had in, uh, in the city. One was Vito Samersic and the other one was Aramex. These contractors were performing uh, street projects but we approached them, we got bids, and you can see there in this graphic that these were the two contractors that we used, uh, totaling about $2.2 million uh, worth of work. We actually, after we got their bids, we went back to the council to authorize the funding uh, because the funding was in the general fund, but their, their construction contractors didn't authorize this work. So we actually went back to council in May of 2020 to authorize the $2.2 million uh, worth of work. And uh, to summarize, the last uh, slide contains what this uh, previous graphic had, which was uh, that we ended up planting 17th Street. 17th Street consisted of 33 planters, 1.6 miles worth of uh, medians, and I'm talking about medians measured end to end, not the total roadway, I'm just talking about the median. So if you measure end to end the 33 planters, that's 1.6 uh, miles worth of medians over 100,000 square feet. We did harbor between McFadden and 17th, that's 0.8 miles, 11 planters, about 53,000 square feet. First street, city limit to city limit, that's 1.3 miles worth of medians, 24 planters, uh, 85,000 square feet. MacArthur from Fairview to the east city limit, it's about 0.86 uh, miles. That's 17 planters and 48,000 square feet. And then also Fairview Street from Sagerstrom to Fifth, about 1.2 miles, 
and that's 14 planters, uh, almost 77,000 square feet. So all in all, we planted nearly six miles of medians, 375,000 uh, square feet. We did it uh, pretty much on time. I, I missed Nabil's target by a couple of months, uh, but uh, th this was a pretty incredible turnaround. And uh, this success story is really due to the support of ETAC over the years, because this money had been requested over the years and it was falling on deaf ears. It took a city manager, a new city manager with just a fresh outlook and it took Nabil to really value uh, uh, doing aesthetics in the city to make this uh, project happen. The, the, the first street underpass project that, that was uh, shown to you is just another example of the effort uh, and the direction by Nabil to really improve the aesthetics in the city. Uh, so this is another uh, project. I just wanted to report to you just the great news that we're able to turn this project around quickly. Of course, we never had an ETAC meeting before this project and we didn't have one uh, until now. Uh, so in this one year's time that we hadn't met, all of this took place. Um, so I'm, I'm here to answer any questions you might have on medians. I know that uh, uh, Janelle asked uh, what we did about the tree watering. What we did is we worked with the existing irrigation system that we had, and we just didn't have the funds to, to do a deep root watering to each individual tree. So I'm being honest and upfront. However, I don't know that we will ever, ever turn off the irrigation system to the medians uh, again. Uh, we have isolated the irrigation system so that if we have to reduce watering, we can still continue watering trees. So oh, yeah. roof watering, the trees, I think, will be, uh, uh, are, are more healthy. And in a future drought, we will continue watering trees and hopefully they won't suffer the way they did for those uh, a couple of years that we had turned the uh, irrigation off. So that concludes my presentation. Any questions on item um, six? Item five, excuse me. Okay, I like all my old ETAC friends here to just, I'm going to give a round of applause on those medians. We worked so hard as a commission. We, we did our ad hoc. We was we were relentless and we went to our city council we went to our city manager and i just like to thank all of uh, to get here today and thank you william for getting the job done so well seriously now what about the shoulder i don't know thank you okay okay well, that was a big round of applause, wasn't it? I bet if Chris Schmidt was here, he'd just leave the applause there. Come on, Larry. So um, we're now moving on to item six in the business calendar, which we finished and closed, moving on to item seven, which is sidewalk repair updates. And uh, this was requested by Dr. Klein, I believe. Well, there's, uh, this is William again, that there are two, uh, two things that we wanted to report on. One of them is the actual uh, volume of sidewalk repairs that we've done over the, uh, over the past year. Uh, we're gonna have to uh, re-agendize a report on the uh, sidewalk schedules and all the volume. We have all of that data. I just don't have it with me for this meeting. Uh, however, I understand that, uh, that Dr. Commissioner Dr. Klein's uh, request was also on ADA ramps. And so right. right now we're going uh, by we're, we're doing a citywide inventory of all of the new wheelchair ramps that we've in, installed. There are still plenty of missing locations. So we wanna come back with a future report telling you what uh, wheelchair ramps we have installed, where there's some missing ones, uh, re special requests that we've received and what the plan of attack is to, to uh, have wheelchair ramps throughout the city. Uh, so we don't have that information just yet. Uh, the, the system that we're using is similar to Pedro's system of the Arbor Access system for trees. We have some new systems that are GIS based in the city. And so we're gonna be using that system. We're gonna capitalize on that to then provide you with a much better report 
uh, that will be uh, comprehensive. Uh, the, the, the one that we're working on right now is the, uh, the, the uh, ADA wraps. Um, so we did, a, we did a, an inventory of ADA ramps from about six or seven years ago. So that needs to be updated. Uh, we do track where we install ramps, but sometimes we get new requests or projects will take them out, expand them. And so we want to be able to report on that. Um, so that, that's all that I have to offer at this point in time. If you have any questions, or any subsequent requests related to this matter, I'd be happy to take note of those. Thank you, William. That's fine, we can put it off. Uh, it is fine with me to put it off uh, to a future meeting when you can gather the new data that we need. This is what I'd like to recommend is that work in your wards. I'm, I'm on ETAC because I represent the Chamber of Commerce, so I'm citywide. But our wards can go to their um, neighborhood associations, and that's what we did a couple of years ago. And and we put out and asked any of our neighbors if they had a trouble to walk someplace or access someplace, and then we submitted it as a neighborhood association back to Public Works, and then they came out and and helped the whole circulation of our neighborhood so that we can have our ADA uh, neighbors be able to walk every street in our neighborhood. So it was a lot of times that they used a driveway or some other ways to do it, but uh, it was on a thin budget, but boy, the public works was very responsive. And so if you know of a neighborhood or a location or something, please go back and and you know work with your neighborhood associations this is this is a way that you can be heard any other um that really concludes our our business calendar right now so um we're moving on to eight and nine and there will be a staff member what is this laurie where are we sitting? Any staff comments? Right. Any staff comments? Brian, um, I saw with the school. Who went to school today? This is Nabil Saba. Oh, he'd just like to, to welcome you back. We have somebody that has a conversation going in the background. Lori, do you know where that's coming from? It's kind of hard of hearing. Okay. No, I'm sorry, I don't. And I don't want to mute everybody. Okay. Sorry. So, sorry. This is Nabil. I'd just like to welcome ETAC, the entire commission, back. I'm really excited about meeting all of you. Uh, I look forward for uh, the opportunity to meet you live uh, and not on Zoom. So, uh, and I thank you for your patience with technology. This is our first. Uh, attempt doing the Zoom, the, the Zoom's uh, webinar, which is unique to us, uh, but I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good success. It's a good trial. Thank you for your patience on that. Um, we will again continue with our monthly meeting going forward. Uh, if there is a topic or a discussion that you would like to have in the future or an update, let us know and let the uh, chair know that you would like to agentize uh, certain topics so we can have the discussion uh, about your interest. Uh, in addition, that uh, we as a uh, public works agency will be bringing in uh, updates on our uh, our uh, um, work in the in the community and our plans and uh, to keep you up to date and get your feedback on our projects and initiatives. Uh, and uh, just one last thing I would like to mention to you and uh, to your appointees that we are going into uh, the budget season right now. We have a list of what we call SPRs, Supplemental Budget Requests. And those are monies that we ask for to add to our initiatives, such as planting more trees, doing more medians, doing street striping, uh, the traffic, a safety enhancement, and many other things 
Uh, that's the way the city funds these uh, initiatives. And uh, I'd just like to ask for your support uh, during this budget season. And uh, if you talk, it, happen, it happens that you speak to with your appointee, let them know that Public Works Agency has initiatives and in needs of funding and would uh, welcome your support. With that, thank you very much and great to meet every single one of you again. So does anyone have any agenda items they would like to see next meeting? Um, we kind of touched here or you can contact us, but does anyone right now? Okay, so um, regarding the bus shelters that were just being cleaned with a blow dryer or the, the mow and blow, there was some uh, talk about changing, I believe the vendor that does that and adding water to washing the, the urine and all the uh, smells down from that. Is that something that's coming up or going to do or what's the status or can we add that to our next agenda? Uh, we can add that to the next agenda. Just uh, a brief the, uh, update on the bus shelters. Uh, during COVID, we did have a vendor that came around and disinfected every single bus shelter that we have in the city. I want to say at least once a week, all throughout uh, the entire COVID uh, uh, duration of, I want to say, four months. So um, those bus shelters are heavily it traveled and used, so, but we did focus on those uh, during the COVID and uh, we will provide you an update on bus shelter maintenance in the next coming uh, um, ETAC meeting. Well, that's absolutely wonderful to know it was disinfected. The next thing is the sewer covers, the uneven sewer covers that that you drive up and down the residential streets that make the loud noises uh, when you drive over them all night long is can we add about the sewer noise or how uneven or if that's ever been um is there money for that or fixing them or whose responsibility that is and add that to the next agenda as well we'll do Thank there you. Is, there is money to fix them, but we need to know about them. So residents that uh, have issues with the noise, uh, they can call us, let us know, and we'll take care of those things almost immediately. But we need to know about them. And uh, so many of our ward representatives can go back to their neighborhood association meetings and give a presentation or ask uh, Arturo or someone to join the presentation um, they have zoom meetings now so it's it's a little bit easier um, to bring that great tree program to your neighborhood and and to your neighbors and ask things like such as the sewer covers or ask them and they feel very good about um, speaking up we've we've just started that level of communication before COVID came in and I think it'd be great to try to have with our new members for them to reach out as well. So I think we're um, meeting on, we're, we have to close the regular meeting. The next regular meeting is April 15th, 2021. We'll be canceled. Commissioner. A special sure. meeting that is held tele televised will be on April 13th at four o'clock. And the reason we're going to our four o'clock meetings instead of our seven seven thirty meetings is that since we're on a Zoom concept, that folks have thirty minutes before the meeting starts to be able to make comment. So if we stay at our four thirty, uh, our seven thirty meeting, people will have to be up at very early hours to be able to uh, make comment. So this way we can offer. Um, more exposure for folks that would like to participate. So at this time, any other um, comments? Do it, my, we usually traditionally, each commissioner makes a comment at the end and we just go through cycling the commissioner's um, comments. Will we like to follow that tradition? Yes. We always do it the way that we're seated. So Dan, you're seated right next to me. So Okay. I just want to uh, thank all the uh, staff for all the great work they've done. 
regard regarding the trees and uh, the medians, especially, you can really tell the difference. What a what a you know, we always talked about, you know, there was entryway to the cities and things like that. And it really has enhanced uh, the, uh, the medians and, and, and the, the, the right of ways on the streets tremendously. So I just want to, uh, again, give them a, a big hand and, uh, and a great job on the tree uh, species list. So thanks again. Uh, Brian, I think you're next. Uh Let's see. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to thank the opportunity to uh, be present and be a part of this, uh, being brand new. Um, I, I hope uh, you know, we someday get back to meeting each other face to face uh, for the first time. You know, meeting you guys face to face. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but uh, once again, nothing to report. But thank you for having me here. So this is a this is the opportunity. If you want to say anything uh, about your neighborhood or about uh, your decision to make join ETAC or want to be or your background, um, the introductions were not going to be done at first, but they were going to be offered. And it was my error not to offer them when I um, started the commissioners. So, Chair McLaughlin, this is William. Just to let you know that uh, Nabil had to step away. We have an, another neighborhood meeting on a different, on the same technology here. So he had to step away, but I'm still here. So go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm open. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Would you like to share anything with us? Uh, I'll answer any questions. Yeah, five kids, two kids, you love trees. I mean, Pedro says we love trees, so I guess that's why you're here. We love trees. <laughs> uh, not put, yeah, not to put the spotlight on me, right? But, I know. I, I apologize, sir. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to be a part of Santa Ana, uh, be a resident here. Um, started... Uh, uh, Recently, over the last couple of years, really taking interest in in, uh, in this in the city more so, um, being involved uh, with the city. But uh, this was just the next uh, the next journey for me, uh, joining the commission, uh, wanting to improve or be a part of, of, of the city, whether it's improvement or or uh, just maintaining the good statue that we, we we do have and had acquired previous to me being here so uh this city is, is it's it's been a blessing to me i'm actually from the city of san diego um uh, moved up here uh, it's been some time uh i think um close to 20 years here in santa Ana. so uh you know it, it's it, it's become my new home um I, I rather uh, stay present here than, you know, a lot of people say to visit the city, you know, they want to go visit San Diego or vacation down there. I'd rather stay here. I, I tell my family, come. <laughs> I'm, I'm being honest. I, it's, it was, it's not worth the commute to me to go down there and leave the city, to be honest with you. Um, it is diverse. I, 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 you don't want to give me a I can go on and on and probably have you guys all night, but um, it is a beautiful city and I'm glad to be a part of it maintaining and, and improving where we can. So thank you. So uh, my comment to you, Brian, is again, we've been working again for four to three to two with, with William and they've listened to us. So it is so good to be able to be on the commission and see a species book when we asked how the matrix and how we wanted to see it, they listened and they responded. So, you know, bring great ideas because that's what we're looking for, the new fresh ideas. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Lawrence, you're my next, uh, any comments for the end of the commission? <laughs> Commissioner Klein. Oh, um, I too would like to thank the staff for their re they were quite thorough, uh, you know, that work on the first street slope uh, project was uh, uh, excellent. And the uh, options that we had to look at, uh, all of them had a great deal of 
I appeal, and I'm sure that they will enhance the city. I am pleased that the tree species guide was finished. Uh, I and uh, the other two co commissioners that made input uh, really tried to make it the best guide that we could come up with with the uh, help of the city. And the city, of course, did most of the work. And I also liked the uh, work on the plantings and the medians. Uh, that was excellent. I, am, I think that all of us are lucky to have such a dedicated staff to work with in uh, the Department of Public Works. Thank you. Um, Mike. Yes. Good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. <clears throat> uh, I just did over what all the rest of the folks said about their presentations. And uh, then <clears throat> we had a problem with our sidewalk out in front of our house and on the side of our house. It was one side was bit larger and the other side we raised. My wife called the city and um, within two days they were out there and fixed it. So thank you. Love to hear the good things. Commissioner Vasquez, what do, would you like to share any information about your background or anything, why you love our trees and our streets and our medians? Yeah, so um, hi, my name is Sweet Vasquez. Um, so I'm a tutor over at Satterback High School. Um, I lived here in Santa Ana all my life. Um, so I'm very familiar with the streets here and just being able to be part of um, any improvements or any additions to um, the streets is, um, I guess, um, significant to me because then I, I could go down um, with my friends and be like, oh, hey, like, you see that? I hope you that. <laughs> so, and also, um, not just that, like being able at my age to be sitting seated at a commission also um, helps me be in of an inspiration to the kids that I work with over at, at, at Saddleback and the other kids I work with and my other programs that I'm involved with as well. Well, welcome, we're glad you're with us. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> you're muted. Thank you. I have to be allowed to unmute myself. Hi, so welcome, yes, to the new commissioners. It's great to have you guys virtually. I too hope we come back to in-person meetings soon. Uh, echo the sentiments of my fellow commissioners and thank the city for all the work that I know we, um, <laughs> at least for me, it's only been a year that I feel like we've been asking for it. And I know you guys have been doing it for longer, but to see it come to fruition is great, right? Isn't that exciting? It is very exciting. So I hope um, my fellow commissioners sh share that, that excitement and I'm looking forward to continuing uh, the work together with the staff. And now that we're commissioners, we can say uh, commissioners as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, do a shout out to Frank. Um, I haven't seen you since I think the barbecue at West Coast Arborist, who is our contractor. They offer tours and explanations. And I, I put a request in uh, with Nabil that once we can gather and sometime it is an immense tour to go over there and see how um, their operations are set up. So thank you again. What time do we have, Lori? It's now it's so five. five. I'm closing the ETAC meeting of March 9th at 6.05, and thank you very much. Stay well. Take care. See you on the 13th. Thank you. This is the first time we did a vote like that. 